So you've gotten a job offer in China and you're looking forward to coming. Well, you're going to need a work visa. This is a process that has gotten more complicated in recent times. When I came here in 2008, it required little that I couldn't just scan or photocopy and email off to my soon-to-be employer in China. These days, the process has gotten a lot more intensive, particularly with the addition of authentication as a key stage in the process. So here, I'm going to do a rundown of what exactly it is you need to do to get a Chinese work visa. This video is focused on the process that you will be going through before you travel to China. And a later video will talk about what it is you need to do when you are traveling and after you arrive in China. First thing, your passport. The odds are that you already have a passport if you've gotten this far, but do make sure it's going to be valid for at least six months after your visa application date, as China requires this. If not, renew right away, as a new passport can take a while. The next thing to realize is that a lot of the process for your work visa must be done in China by your soon-to-be employer, and you won't even see a lot of that process happening. Therefore, it's very important that you keep in touch with your employer, whether by email or by WeChat, which is a chat app that almost everybody has in China. You're probably going to need a WeChat account when you get to China. So you may as well make one if your employer wants you to keep in touch with them that way. You need to keep closely in touch with them and pay attention to what documents they need from you and when they need them. If you don't get them those documents on time, you might not be able to get your visa on time. This would delay your arrival in China and could even jeopardize your job offer. The main thing your employer is going to be working on is getting you a work permit in China. This is an essential document that you need in order to get a work visa. Expect them to need a copy of your passport, your CV or resume, and any qualifications you may need for your job, such as degrees or certificates. Also about degrees, you may be expected to send a copy of your diploma not necessarily your transcript, as might be expected in your home country. You may also need to show a criminal record check from your home country and possibly other countries you may have lived in. I've had to get FBI background checks done a few times for this reason. Now for the fun part. Authentication. Back when I first got a work visa in 2008, this wasn't a thing. But China has had problems with foreigners getting work visas using falsified documents. So now they require many foreign documents to be authenticated by a Chinese embassy or consulate before they can be used in China. This process is somewhat complicated and it varies some based on what country you're in. However, here's a basic breakdown of how it might work for someone like me. Let's say I need to authenticate my degree. Since it was issued in the United States, we'll need to use the procedures that are used for authentication by the Chinese embassy and consulates in the United States. Step one is to get your degree notarized. Lots of registrars at universities, including the one I attended, can send you a notarized transcript. Now, that notarization needs to be authenticated by the state in which it was issued. In my case, that's California, so I'd need to send my notarized transcript to an address in Sacramento to get it authenticated by the Secretary of State. There is a Chinese consulate that recognizes California's seal, the Consulate General in Los Angeles. So I would then be able to have that consulate authenticate the document. Some states do not have a Chinese consulate that recognizes their seal. And in that case, an additional step is required authentication by the U.S. Department of State before it can ultimately be authenticated by the Chinese Embassy in Washington, D.C. Only after the document has been authenticated by the Chinese Embassy or Consulate can it be used in China. I gave an example from the United States because that's where I have documents from. How the process works in other countries varies, so check the website of the Chinese Embassy in your country for more information. Once you've gotten all your documents to your employer, they will apply for your work permit 
from a Chinese government office that has jurisdiction over their location. It will take a while to process this, so it's best to get all your documents in early. Assuming there are no problems, your employer will get preliminary approval for your work permit in the form of a document that they will need to send to you. When I got mine in 2008, it was a paper document they mailed to me. Today, they can send the document by email. You'll need it in order to apply for your work visa. You'll also need a passport that's valid for at least six months beyond the date of your application, as we discussed previously. You'll need to fill out a visa form. These days, China has an online form that you fill out, then print and submit. You'll need a visa photo, and fair warning, the requirements for this photo may not be the same as the requirements for passport photos in your country. If you have a photographer take a photo for you, be sure they understand the requirements, which you can find on the website of a Chinese embassy or consulate. Also, you'll have to pay a fee for your visa. Depending on the terms of your contract, your employer may reimburse you for this fee. Submitting your visa application to the Chinese embassy or consulate varies from place to place. In-person submission is an option, either at the Chinese diplomatic mission itself or at a visa center designated by them. I applied for my visa in person way back in 2008, but I was living near Los Angeles at the time and could easily get to the consulate there. This may be problematic if you don't live near one. Unfortunately, most, if not all, Chinese diplomatic missions refuse to directly accept visa applications by mail, which means your only options are to travel to the embassy or consulate yourself, or get someone else to submit your application for you, usually a visa agent. Some Chinese embassies and consulates designate a visa application center that people can mail their applications to. In countries where this is not the case, for example, the United States, it's easy enough to find visa agents online, but of course they will charge fees for their services. Also, many employers who reimburse visa fees will not necessarily reimburse agent fees. However, you may still find that an agent fee is a good deal cheaper than the cost of traveling to the embassy or consulate yourself. How you should pay your visa fee also varies depending whether you are submitting your application directly to the Chinese mission or working with a visa agent, so check with them to find out. Normally, visa applications take less than a week to process. Once you've got your Chinese visa, check it to make sure there are no errors. It should be listed as a Z or Z visa, which means a work visa. It will be for one entry only, and though this may seem strange, the duration of each stay will be listed as zero days. This actually means length of stay to be determined later. This is because all work visa holders need to apply for a residence permit within 30 days of arriving in China at which point the length of time they are allowed to remain in China will be decided. Also, a residence permit can be used to depart and re-enter China any number of times, so don't worry about your work visa being valid for only a single entry. Once you've got the residence permit, that problem is solved. One other thing to note is the enter before date, which is usually three months after visa issuance. As it says on the tin, you need to enter China before that date, so you shouldn't apply for the visa more than three months before you plan to travel. Some people call this the visa's expiration date, but note that it only states what date you must enter China before and has no bearing on how long you can remain in China. So for example, if your visa's enter before date is June 1st and you enter China on May 31st, there's no problem with your staying in China past June 1st as long as you apply for your residence permit within 30 days of your arrival. A word of caution. I assume if you've signed a contract with an employer that you have reason to believe that they are on the up and up, and most of them are. But if any employer asks you to apply for a tourist or business visa instead of a work visa, that employer is not abiding by Chinese law. It is unlawful to work full-time in China on any visa other than a work visa. 
and you cannot enter on a tourist or business visa and then change to a work visa inside China. Changing visa types after arrival was once possible, but only a long time ago, even before I came to China in 2008. As for working illegally on a business or tourist visa, I won't lie, I've known people who did this, but I wouldn't recommend it, especially as China is cracking down on this sort of thing more and more. If your employer wants you to do this, you're better off looking for a new employer. But let's say everything is okay and you've got your work visa now. Now you're ready to travel to China. I'll be covering what you need to do during and after your journey to China in a separate video. If you don't want to miss that, this would be a great time to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Hope you've enjoyed this first part of my rundown of the process for a work visa for China. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye!